Hey everyone, Chip here, and man, do I have a treat for you today. It's an add-on that Anthony Arguis and I have been working on for a few months now, and it's called Spock. It's an amazing structured model generator and something I'm sure you're going to want to check out. First, a little background. Many of you know that we already have a couple pretty cool products in Simple Sci-Fi Flex, as well as KitOps Synth. And like the new Spock, both of these products are also algorithmic model generators. So let's talk about the differences between them and Spock. Simple Sci-Fi Flex is an add-on that primarily uses geometry nodes and is great for creating very large city type scenes with a high degree of randomness. It is extremely fast and can create millions of instance polygons in just a few seconds. It can also create very high resolution displacement and texture maps for use in both commercial and hobbyist projects. To do this, it uses something we call D-Packs, which are simply collections of objects. You can easily create your own and there are many available for sale online as well. Synth uses K-Packs from KitOps to create just about anything. It is more complex, more structured, and much slower, but it also supports very elaborate inserts and models and snapping to hard points as well as Boolean cutting. And unlike the other two, Synth has a fairly steep learning curve and requires KitOps to work. And now we introduce Spock. Spock uses 10 different algorithms to pack objects next to each other without overlapping, while also totally contained within a designated perimeter. Originally, we tried to do this using geometry nodes, but then realized it wasn't really possible. So, Anthony worked up some magic and programmed the propagation all within Python. And just like Simple Sci-Fi Flex, it uses instances, so it's really, really fast. It also uses the same D-Packs that Simple Sci-Fi Flex uses. Remember, it's easy to create your own D-Packs as they are just collections of mesh objects. Spock is very, very easy to use. You can quickly create custom Greeble and Nerny effects in just a few minutes. It's really good for creating structured and organized control panels in sci-fi interiors. Unlike Simple Sci-Fi Flex, with Spock, you have much more control over the final layout of your instances. You can quickly create a layered workflow that is super easy to modify at any point in the process. Spock comes with a number of pretty cool utilities as well, including the ability to replace materials globally. We've also added in a D-Pack with several collection sets that will help you get started. And there are more on the way from us and others, which we'll talk about in a minute. And Spock also comes with a set of materials that are useful, including a multi-material that allows you to create different materials for each instance it's applied to. It also has an edgeware version as well. And like its namesake, Spock is fairly intelligent. It remembers settings you used for different packs. Also, it can do things like store thousands of instances in custom collections. Here are just a few of the features packed into Spock. You can choose from 10 different packing algorithms or let Spock choose for you. The DPAC browser allows you to quickly load connection sets from your DPAC library. We include Sci-Fi DPAC with several collection sets. Here are some of the objects from those sets. Spock includes multi-material and edgeware material along with utility for global swapping of materials. It has a refined layered workflow which allows you to save existing pack instances into new collections, load settings from previously saved collections, turn on and off visibility of saved collections, and convert instances to meshes for saved collections. It automatically checks for updates. And you can define any folder for your DPAC collections in preferences. The max number of instances can be set when packing so as to not overly burden Blender. And like all of our products, Spock comes with very detailed documentation and full support on Discord. Just like KitOps, Spock already has creators building DPACs for Spock. Many of the new DPACs are cataloged at cw1.me forward slash DPACs. Check them out. Also, here are some renders created by our beta testers along with some of their DPACs as well. So let's open it up and take a look at it and see how much fun you're going to have with this new Spock product. Okay, we're now in Blender and we have a very simple object with three faces, as you can tell. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Spock to populate and propagate a bunch of objects onto these faces. So let's get started. First thing we do is we're going to grab this Spock Sci-Fi D-Pack that comes with Spock. And we we'll say load to scene. And what it does is it creates a whole bunch of collections from that D-Pack. And these collections now 
all have objects inside them, and those objects is what it uses to populate with. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. I'm going to collapse this a little bit, and I'm just, you know, grab two collections right off the bat. So let's grab this panel under and this pipes one. We're going to make the size of this too, so it's going to double the size. I just happen to know that's probably going to work best uh, for this one. And we'll just hit the pack button. And you can see it's okay. It's not really kind of something that's as dense as I really want it to be. So let's go ahead and jump the density up to two and let's pack it again. And it's a little better, but not a whole lot better. So what we need to do is we need to change this set type to fill for both of these. And what that means is that when a set type is fill, it'll fill it all with this one. And then it'll take that face and fill it all with the second one. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it randomly by 0, 90, 180, or 270 for both of these. Now when I pack this, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So let's select all the faces or none of the faces. And we can also do this in object mode as well. So I'm going to pack this for object mode, and it'll go ahead and it'll populate all the faces in the object. And that's really good. So I'm going to hit the Save button, and I've created a brand new collection that I can toggle on and off right here with that on there. So let's go ahead next and let's clear all and let's do some lights. We're going to add some lights to this. So here we go with the lights, which is SP dots. And let's give it a margin of 10% and let's just pack it. Okay, there we have it. And those dots are all over the place. And when I turn this on, the dots are gone. Why is that? Well, the dots, it turns out, are placed directly on the face because they're single planes. So what I need to do is move them up. So I'm going to make this 0 0.03. That's 0 0.03 meters, since this is meters are the world coordinates for this. And let's pack it again. There you go. Now they're floating a little bit higher. So when I turn this on, you'll see that some of them are behind, some of them are in front. But it looks actually pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have there. And you can see we've got some lights inside of there. And we can move that any way we want to, but that's good. Let's save that. And let's clear all. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tab into my object and select just this top face here. And let's add some displays and some controls, like switches. And we're going to give the margin of those one. So we want them not too close to each other. And we'll pack them. And we'll take the density down to one also. Uh, and, and we're just going to pack them. And then you can see that packed them, but it packed them so that you can't really see through them. I want I, I don't want the density to be quite as high as that, even though we take it down to one. And if I take it down to 0.5 and pack it, it really just quits packing at a certain level. Uh, the other thing we have a problem with is we have a problem with the rotation. So we just need to rotate these probably 90 degrees. Should work. Let's put the density back to two and pack them and see if we got the, if we got that right. Yeah, that looks good. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create some spaces in here. So I'm going to add a new collection set and I'm going to use the same exact one as switches. And I'm going to set this to empty. So this means that it's going to use the same bounding boxes for switches, but it's going to set it to empty. And I want this to be twice as prevalent as these others. So I'm going to go to the factor and make it two. So this is for, for every four instances, one will be a display, one will be a switch, and two will be these empty ones. So let's pack it and see what we get. Yeah, so you can see now it's quite a bit lighter. So that's good. Let's just go ahead and save that. And now we're going to go down here and select this face. And let's go ahead and clear all and say new. And we're going to pack this with panels extra large. Let's pack it. And you can see they're not high enough. So let's go ahead. First thing we want to do is move those panels up. So it's 0 0.05. Let's do that. Pack them again. Let's give them 1% margin. They're actually too big. So let's just go ahead and scale them down to something else. So 0.66 seems to work. And I might try something like a corner sorted on this. See what it does. Yeah, it drops it down a little bit. Because these are instances, I can just take any one of these and just delete it. So I can see through to it if I want to. So that's that's kind of cool. We'll just leave that like that. Tab into it. And then we're just you know going to simply put a floor in here. And uh, we got to save save this. And we'll say clear all, new, add a floor. And let's pack that. Oh, let's, let's put the Z offset at 0 0.05. We know that we're going to need to do that again. So there it is, packing it. And there's the floor. And I think it's a little too big. So let's go 0 0.66. Let's try that. Pack it 0 0.8. Pack it. There we go. That looks good. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that 
if we hide all these, we see that this is pretty good, but I want may want to move these forward a little bit. So what I can do that is say Control R, and let's just move this all the way back to the back a little bit, and then select that face and pack it. Now it moved them all up nicely. And let's turn them all on, and let's render it. And there is a really very quickly created sci-fi object that we created using Spock. We also have videos on how to create your own D-Packs and collection sets, as well as in-depth tutorials on how to really get the most out of Spock. And those links will be in the description. If this interests you, jump over Blender Market, grab yourself a copy. And thanks for watching. See you online.